Hi everyone, and welcome to our module about web design. So I am done with our Adobe Creative Suite modules. There is going to be no more new techniques that I'm going to be teaching you in After Effects, Premiere, or Photoshop. So we are done with our lesson material for those three softwares. So now our last module for this class is all about web design. So this is going to give you a better idea of what I'm asking you to do for the second part of your final project in case you were still a little bit confused about that. So there's going to be two parts this series. So this first part we're going to talk about coding and we're going to do a little bit with coding and talk about like the languages HTML, CSS, and JavaScript and then in the next video we're going to actually talk about the fundamentals of good web design and then we're going to do a little introduction to Wix.com which is the CMS or content, ma content management system that you will be using for your web portfolio. Okay so Usually I'm not a fan of PowerPoints, but since we're not in person, um, having a PowerPoint presentation I think was the best choice in order to give you something visual to look at while I talk for a little while. So let's talk about web design. So to talk about just the discipline of web design, so it encompasses many platforms now. So, you know, back in the 80s when the internet was first invented and into the 90s and even into the early 2000s, you know, web design and web designers, you know, they designed specifically for computers, for browsers. But now that we have so many different ways of accessing the internet, web design encompasses so many other platforms like phones and tablets and game consoles and there's app web designers and um, there's all different kinds of platforms that uh, designers design for. So if you're interested in becoming a web designer you don't have to just um, you're not just constricted to browser web design anymore. There's a whole different number of channels that you can explore being a web designer. But still, like user experience, user interface, you might hear me throw around the term UI for user interface. User experience is still top priority no matter if you're de designing for a browser, an app, a phone, an iPad, or a game console. User experience is always the most important. Uh, and then quickly, I just want to talk about the difference between front-end and back-end design. So front-end web designers are responsible for developing the visual parts of the website. So layout, they choose typography and color palettes and graphics. Um, they're responsible for the user interaction and experience, which, as we just said, is the most important. And they do this through the use of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And front-end web design is what we're going to dabble in a little bit when we start doing our work with Wix and then our coding demo that's going to come a little later. Back-end web designers, which we are not going to go into detail about, but I just want you to know that they deal with the server side of development. So they're responsible for all the behind the scenes action. Like if you've ever used like an interactive form on a website, um, they're in charge of making sure that works, so making sure all the coding of that um, is right. And they work with databases and scripting, and they just do like the architecture, like the, the coding structure of the website. So that's just a little bit um, of the difference between a front end versus back end web designer, but we're going to focus on the front end design uh, development in this module. And then, always the most important elements of web design is first use usability, accessibility, and user experience. So we always want our website to be easy to use, easy to find, and then we always want our user to have a good experience so that they continue to visit our site and use our services again. 
Um, so these are always the top three priorities that a web designer should have in mind when designing any kind of site, mobile, browser, app, whatever it may be. Okay, so now let's get into a little bit about the languages that are used to construct these websites. So HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. And this means that you use tags to mark up content on a page, which identifies it as a specific type of element. And examples of elements are headers or paragraphs. So we're just distinguishing between different types of content on a page. And we use these tags that we see down here with like these arrows pointing um, to the left and the right. So this is a tag for a paragraph element. This is a tag for a header element. There's also elements like titles and other things like that, which we're going to get some practice with. But elements are the core building blocks of HTML documents, you know, just like layers are the core building blocks of Photoshop and um, After Effects and all the other things, uh, all the other softwares we've used this semester. Elements are the building blocks of HTML and they are always opening and closing tags. So this is an opening tag. This is an example of a closing tag with this forward slash. Um, and there always has to be an opening and a closing tag with content wrapped inside it. Now, this is definitely going to make more sense once we start our coding demo. So if you don't understand it right now, just hang in there. And once we start actually practicing with coding, it's going to make more sense. And then at the heart of every web page, is HTML. You're not going to visit any web page on this entire internet that doesn't have some HTML coding. Okay, so another type of language that is used for front-end developing is CSS or cascading style sheets. And unlike HTML, CSS is not a markup language, but it is a presentation language. So just like elements um, are the building blocks of HTML. Um, CSS code is comprised of style sheets. And style sheets are comprised of rules that control the styling and positioning of HTML elements. So basically, if we have a paragraph and we have text in that paragraph, a style sheet is going to tell um, the website, okay, we want it this size font, this style font, this color font. So it's all about how the HTML elements are going to visually appear on your website. And then style sheets, which are comprised of rules. The rules are then comprised of selectors, declarations, properties, and values. And I'm going to show you an example on the next slide, but just um, before we get there, selectors. They target HTML elements, and declarations are what contain the properties and the values that are used to style the HTML elements. So I'm going to show you an example right now. So here's an example of some CSS coding. And it looks probably like a jumble of letters and symbols and words, but trust me, you're going to make sense of it. So. First, we have our selector. So remember, our selector is what targets the HTML element. So in this case, we're targeting the paragraph tag that we would have programmed using HTML. Then this entire block of text we have right here, um, signified by these brackets here, this is our declaration block. And then within our declaration block, exists our property, which is font size, font family, color, and then our value is black, 16-point uh, font, the font family is Arial, sans serif. Now if you don't know what sans serif is, this is actually a sans serif font. So the difference between sans serif and serif fonts is that at the end of the letters there's usually a little tail on serif fonts. So serif fonts are like script fonts. They're kind of like cursive. Sometimes they have little tails, but sans, they're just straight block letters. 
So that's just a quick definition about what sans serif is. But So we have properties, so our color, our font size, our font family, those are all properties. And then every property has a value, which would be, in this case, our color would be black, or our font size would be 16 points, or our font style would be Arial and sans serif. So a few other things I want to note. So colons are always used to separate properties from values. So as you can see here, we have a colon separating our property font family for our value uh, Arial and sans serif. Semicolons are used to move from one property to the next. So you can see we have a semicolon between our font family and our font size. Um, and then equal sign is an assignment operator. It assigns a value to a variable, which we're going to see. It doesn't. This won't make sense right now, but when we get into our demo, you're going to see where this comes into play. And then same with a double equal sign, which checks the value. That it's hard to explain without actually putting it into action. So this this equal and double equal sign is going to come into play when we start our coding demo in a few minutes. Okay. Moving on, so JavaScript is the last language that I want to talk about, um, and this is a client-side scripting language that controls functionality and behavior of websites. What do I mean by client-side? I mean the code, instead of running off a server, client-side code runs in the browser. So this is how you get these interactive elements, these interactive forms and such on these websites. And, it, and JavaScript is purposely designed to complement HTML and CSS code. And again, like I said, it's used to make interactive elements. Okay, so with that, it is time to actually start putting some of this code into practice and how we are going to do that is so if you're working on a Mac I want you to search for text edit which is a plain text program and if you are working on a Windows computer, I want you to find your notepad feature. So once you find those two things, launch them. And then the next few steps I'm going to tell you about only apply to Mac users. So if you are not using a Mac, disregard what I'm about to say. But if you are using a Mac, you have to take these extra steps in order to be able to use text edit for coding. Okay, so again, if you're using a Mac with text edit open, I want you to click on text edit up in the left upper left hand corner and I want you to open the preferences menu. Now if you have either rich text or wrap to page selected, make sure that both of those are unchecked. And I want you to check plain text. And then after you've clicked plain text, I want you to go over to open and save. And I want you to make sure that add.txt extension to plain text files is unchecked. So please uncheck this box, but please do check this box that says display HTML files as HTML code instead of formatted text. So on this open and save menu, please uncheck this option and please check this option. Now, your text is probably going to come out smaller than mine, so if you want to change the size of your text right now so you can see it better, use um, plain text font, change this option to make it bigger. The default, I believe, is 11 on a Mac, 
Um, so if you want to make it bigger so you can see, like change it here. And then once you've made those changes, go ahead and close the preference window. And now PC users, check back in because now the rest of this applies to you too. Um, so now before we do anything, we're just going to go up to our save menu and we're, file menu and we're going to save and we're going to call this coding demo and you can save it where you want like I'm just gonna save it on the desktop for easy access but you can save it wherever uh, you you're saving your files um, but it is important for Mac and window users when you save this save as make sure that you if you have a .txt extension, delete that and replace it with a .html extension. So please make sure that you type this exactly into your save as bar. So coding demo.html. And then once you've done that and you've designated a place to save your file, you can go ahead and click save. Okay. So now let's start to do some coding. Okay, so every web page, every web page always starts with an HTML tag and closes with an HTML tag. So we're going to start by doing HTML. So that's our open HTML tag and we're going to create our closed HTML tag. Now, before we get really into this, I just want to say that coding is case sensitive, space sensitive. It's very important that you type exactly as I do into your text edit or notepad file. Even if you make one little typo a whole thing can go wrong. So please, please be accurate and pay attention to exactly how I am typing these symbols and letters onto my text edit document. Okay, so we have our opening HTML tag and our closing. Now everything else that we do is going to come within our opening and our closing tag. Okay, we're going to do a simple title and body um, text. So we're going to go ahead and put a head. So an opening head tag. We're going to do an opening title tag. And this title tag is what is going to display on the tab. And I'll explain that um, when we actually view this document online, but this title is what is going to appear in the tab, in the uh, tab on your, near your address bar. So we're just going to call this exploring HTML, and then we're going to close that tag. and then we're going to close our head. And then let's do a little bit, one sentence of body text. So let's open our body tag. We'll just write, you can write anything you want. I'm just going to do my first web page. I'm going to close my body and I already have my closing HTML tag here. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save this. And then wherever you saved your document, I want you to go ahead and click on it, double click on it, and it should open in whatever your default internet browser is. And as you can see, we have 
our first web page. So here is what I was talking about for our title. So exploring HTML, this is what um, distinguishes what is going to be in your, your tab title. So we um, set our tab title here and then our body, which just defaulted to, it looks like 11 point font times new Romans is my first web page. So congratulations. We just made the most basic web page possible. Okay, so you can keep this open or you can close it. I'm just going to minimize that because as we make changes in our text edit or notepad files, I'm just going to come back to this and refresh. So I'm just going to minimize this. And now let's go ahead and add a header and a paragraph um, tag. So obviously like the header is going to make whatever text we put in that header, it's gonna make it big. It's gonna make it bigger than our paragraph text so we can distinguish between our header and our body text. So if I wanna make this my header, I'm just gonna go ahead in front of my first web page and I'm going to insert a tag for a header. Now you can have more than one header on a web page. That's why we're putting the one. We can have multiple. So if you wanted to add another one, we could do H2, H3. It's you have infinite number. So, but since this is our first header, we're going to just do H1. And then at the end, we'll close that. And then let's go ahead and make some paragraph text. So let's open a paragraph tab and we'll just say, this is my first attempt at coding. I'm so proud. Of course, you can write whatever you want. You are free to be as creative as you like. Okay, so now I'm going to save this. And let's refresh our page. And now you can see we have a header. And now we have some paragraph text. And of course, our header is bigger and it's in bold, which differentiates it from our regular paragraph uh, text. Okay, so this, so I'm going to minimize this. So right now what we have is strictly HTML. But now let's try and add some CSS, so casta cascading style sheets into the mix. Let's try to make this a little more visually appealing. Now, in order to do this, we have to open a style sheet. So under our title, we can open a style sheet. And now we're going to identify a selector, which is going to target an element within our HTML code. So our selector is going to be body. So we're going to target the body. Then we are going to put a curly bracket to designate where we are opening our declaration. And then we will put our property, which is color in this case separate our property from our value with a colon. I'll, you, can, you can choose whatever color you want. I'm going to choose blue. And then I'm going to close that. And then close my declaration space. And then I'm going to open another declaration space, but this time I'm going to target my header. So H1 open a declaration space and this time I'm going to do a property for font 
family, separate it from my value, which is going to be Georgia, Georgia font. I'm going to do font size 40 point font. And then I'll do color orange. Close my declaration. Close my style sheet. And go ahead and save my document and see what changes were made on my web page. Perfect. So, based on what we coded here, we told our document that we wanted to target our body text and make it blue. And we also we wanted to target our header. We wanted to change our font to Georgia. We wanted to make it 40 points and we wanted to make it orange. Now if I wanted to make it green, I could go ahead and change it here, save, and now it would be green. And same with my body, if I wanted to make my font bigger, and save, I can do that, I can do that too. So here is our first attempt at incorporating CSS into our HTML code. And now I bet you can guess the last thing that we're going to do is, yes, incorporate JavaScript into our HTML and CSS code. Okay, so this is going to get a little trickier, so bear with me and let's get started. So what we are going to attempt to do together is we are going to create a button and when we click that button we are going to change the color of our body text right here from blue to red. So that is what we are going to attempt to do using JavaScript language. So the first thing we have to do is create the button. So we are going to, under our paragraph um, element right here, we are going to code a button. So we are going to type this and make sure again you are typing exactly case sensitive, space sensitive, just like me. Okay, so what we did just now is we coded a button and we chose, so here we go with the equal sign. So remember from our, um, from our PowerPoint slide, we learned that equal signs are an assignment operator so it assigns a value to a variable. So basically we're telling our code that we want, when we click this button, we want it to change color. So we assigned a value, but we haven't assigned a variable yet. And then we also gave our button some um, text. And when we do save this and go to our web page, our button is going to say change color. So here's the text of our button, and here is the action that we want um, the value that we want our button to change. So now we are going to go ahead and assign the variable. So we have to tell, we have to open a script 
because we're using JavaScript, so we have to open a script tag. And then we're going to now code a very complex statement right here. So please bear with me as we all type this in together. Okay, so just double check that your code looks identical to mine. And basically what we just coded is we are telling our document to look for an element by its ID and our ID is color. And then this will in turn target the button code that we already wrote and then on click is the action that we're going to take to in order to change the color and this is the name of the function that's stored in the curly brackets like the CSS code so this is what we are telling the document to look for and then we are uh, telling it what action we are going to take in order to change the color. So now we are actually going, now we are going to code the variable which is what is actually going to change and then we are going to write a conditional if and else statement in order to make this happen. So now first let's um, do our variable. So this is what's going to change. So our variable is going to be our text right here that we want to change from blue which is its current text color and then when we press the button we want it to change to red so so we we designated our variable here and now we are going to do the function which is going to be to change color and here we're going to open our curly bracket like our CSS and we're going to write our conditional statement so again bear with me as we write this kind of complex code Here we have the double equal signs, which remember that is that checks the value, so we need that in order for it to check if our text is blue.
So this right here, this conditional statement here, is a very complex way of telling our document that if our color of our body um, text is blue, then make it red. If it's red, then put it back to blue, and which is the return to current color, which the current color is blue. So this is just a very complex way of say, if the text is blue, change it to red. If the text is red, change it back to blue. And then of course, at the end, we had to close our script language. Okay, so now if we save this, we should be able to go ahead and refresh our web page and a nice button that says change color should appear. And now when we click this button, this text right here should change to red. So in three, two, one, and it changes to red. And now if I click it again, it changes back to blue, red, blue, red, blue. So we were successful in coding our HTML, our CSS, and our JavaScript. And this is an example here of how you can use JavaScript to code interactive elements on your web page. Now, of course, go ahead, play around with this if you'd like, change your title text, change your header text, change your body text, keep the color function. Um, of course, you don't have to use blue and red, you can change colors, you can change font sizes, you can change font families, but or if you just want to leave everything as is, that is fine. But once you're done experimenting, go ahead and upload this to Blackboard so that I can see your great work with coding. And then when you're ready, go ahead and click on the next video and we can start our work with Wix.com. Thanks for watching, everyone.